Hey guys. How are you? I'm still getting ready in case you didn't realize that. Hey Lisa. So I have out my small jelly plate, squall, small square one. I want to say it's a six by six. Does it say on here? I don't even know anymore. I think, oh, I know a way to tell you. <laughs> yes, it's six by six. It's the same size as my stencil. So we are going to, oh, cool, Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mary. So I was recently watching a video by Jelly Arts where they water did watercolor watercolor printing on the jelly plate. I thought that was interesting. So I thought we would try I was talking about it yesterday and I we kind of agreed that we would try it today. I'm going to use a couple different kinds of paper. I've got some fluid cold pressed watercolor paper. Um, a few sheets left on this 8x8 block that I thought we would try. I have this piece of paper, um, which I have to start playing with these sheets before my daughter takes them all from me. Um, um, this paper is by Tattered Angels. It's pure mistable papers. This is the one called suede, which is blank. Um, they do have it printed on both sides with different kinds of designs that you can watercolor on this paper. You can actually dump the whole sheet of paper in water, get it soaking wet, and it doesn't rip. It will flatten back out. It's amazing paper. Um, I have links in the description for this paper. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably have, give me one second. Maybe I can find them. Of course, maybe not. Somewhere around here, I have little samples of the paper. <clears throat> oh, here they are. Found it. That was easier than it, I thought it would be. So you can get black and white prints on the paper um, that are perfect for watercoloring um, the designs in or um, printing on them. And how come my picture is suddenly blurry? Oh, there I am. Oh, you know why? Because I put the auto. I put the auto. Hold on. I gotta unclick the auto focus. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you can get the Pure Mistables paper, which is what this is, blank, which is called suede. The link for that's in the description. This is the printed version. I put the, just the link for that in the description, too. Um, these are just little squares of it. And so what you can do with this paper, I'm going to move all this out of the way for a second. <clears throat> and grab my water. Okay, these are my clean water. I, I'm going to dunk the whole little piece of paper in there. Get it soaking wet, right? It's soaking wet now. I know like some of you are like, what are you doing? <laughs> so can you see what it's doing? It, it's, it starts to flatten out by itself. Hey, Lindy. It, and this is still wet, but it'll flatten back out again and look. And I'm not, I'm pulling kind of hard and it's not, <laughs> it's amazing paper. I've got to tell you, I don't know what it's made out of. I do think it has a high cotton content, um, but it's interesting paper. So this is the, again, these are samples of the printed. We're going to play with the plain white today, which is called suede. Again, the links in the description below. These are 12 by 12 sheets. Um, my daughter, who's recently um, discovered a love of illustration and watercolor, um, has decided she loves this paper, and every time she comes over, she steals a few more sheets from me, so <laughs> I need to go buy some more. <laughs> All right, so we're going to cut this big 12 by 12 sheet up into 6 by 6 inch squares. It feels really thick, like 
a really high quality, high cotton content paper. Um, okay. <clears throat> We've got our jelly plate. Again, this is the six by six inch one. I've got some clear soap, uh, dish soap. I've got my watercolors. I think to start with, I want to play with the neons. We're going to get them wet here. It's almost time to refill my water bottle. It's getting a little low. <clears throat> if I sound funny today, it's because I'm having a lot of problems with my asthma and allergies this week. So I apologize in advance. If you are, hey Bella, if you are following me on social media, which I think most of you are, you've been seeing my posts this, today especially, but also the last few days. Um, I have a surplus of finished artwork. Some of it is nice artwork. We're gonna leave these marinate for a minute. Um, some of it's, you know, <laughs> some of it needs help, but I just have a lot of it and I, I'm only, you know, it needs to go. So it, it could be anything like this or this. I don't know when these were painted. 2012. It could be our set of nudes that you've seen before. Um, they all need to go. Some of them are already listed on Etsy. Some of them are not. I'm going to get some like large priority mail flat rate boxes and some medium ones and I'm going to just fill them with canvases, maybe a few prints. I have portfolios full of prints and uh, actually not prints. I'm sorry. Um, paintings on paper and um, I just need to purge some of it. Um, some of it I'm going to keep to paint over, but a lot of it's just got to go away. So if you're interested, private message me, email me. If there's a particular painting that you've seen that you want to ask about, um, then again, private message me. Um, I do also have, of course, the new stencils are available in Etsy, as are my stamps and my a signed copy of my book, which is also available over at Amazon. So check out all of that stuff and see if there's anything that you would like to have. I can arrange that. Um, this is a Princeton Neptune half inch. I don't even know what this is called. It looks like a filbert brush because it's it's flat, but it's rounded at the end. That's probably some kind of wash brush. Now this is a jelly plate. It has nothing on it. Just plain. Now that we got the business stuff out of the way, we're going to just take some of our watercolor. I would not object to the prints being used in your art. I wouldn't object to you buying some of the canvases and painting over them. Um, I wouldn't object to, you can do whatever you want to them after you get the box. You can take the, the canvas off the stretcher bar, bars and do, and cut it up. There are just, they're, they're yours to do whatever you want with them. <laughs> yeah, I would love a guillotine paper cutter. I don't have one. So I just, and you can see how the watercolor, it just beads up on the jelly plate because the jelly plate's a non-porous surface. So it beads up on it, right? I have loads of like paintings done on paper. Oops. I stuck my hand in something. Um, I have I have tons of them, and if I'm not going to be reprinting them and selling them, which a lot of them are not, then I'm going to um, let them go. So look at that. That's just that's interesting, right? So let's do one more of those without anything on the jelly plate. I, yeah, I might want to put some more on that. So I never would have thought of doing this until I saw the Jelly Arts video. Um, where they were showing um, using watercolors on the jelly plate, which I was like, duh, <laughs> why, why didn't I think of that? 
you can cut them up like if you ordered a um a bunch of prints for me uh original you know paintings on paper mary you could cut them up um you you could do whatever you want with them i do have a lot of the artwork photographed and scanned some of that is available as digital copies in the etsy shop some of it's not though so if you would like a digital copy of something you just let me know There's a little bit of paint left on here, and so I'm going to grab this one. Now, with acrylic paint, if you were using acrylic paint on the jelly plate, of course, you would brayer it on and cover it well. I like the sort of unknown of using watercolor on here. I like the lack of control. Those of you who've been watching me are um, not going to be surprised. I know, right? So, Kathy, I agree. I never would have thought, it never would have occurred to me. <laughs> not, not in a million years. Okay, let's try, let's try the yellow. Oops, I just got a bunch of orange in my yellow. That's okay. Trying to pick up some of the orange I just contaminated the yellow with. Yeah, got it most of it out. Okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna do some layers, Cindy. Definitely we're gonna do some layers. I just saw a notification come up on the top of the screen here. I don't know what it is. I can't answer things right now. Look at that. I'm telling you guys, this is fabulous. Now we're gonna, next we're gonna clean off the jelly plate and we're gonna put some soap on here. So the soap breaks the surface tension and allows some of the paint to spread out and stick to the jelly plate. I love that. So we need to get the rest of that up there. Okay, I love, look at this one, I love that. Let's do one more because I want to put one more layer on this one. This is a suede paper from Canvas Corp Brands. This is uh, manganese blue. This is Daniel Smith. It's not technically a, a neon, but this is my neon and brights palette. They do have a um also have a video using ink something about using inks on the jelly plate which i haven't watched yet yeah. all right so now we're going to take just a drop a drop of soap and a baby wipe i have not tried this i'm experimenting live trying it for the first time with all of you so <clears throat> whatever happens happens so then you just spread the soap out all over the jelly plate <laughs> somebody's at the door you guys hang on one second who's at my door Okay, this would be why that we're not going to do live broadcast during construction. <sighs> that was one of the contractors. Okay, we put soap on the jelly plate, which will break the surface tension and should allow for the paint to do different things. See how it doesn't beat up? Can you see that? 
it sits more on top of the on top of the jelly plate rather than beat up and being resistant. It does still resist a little bit, but you get a different look. That's with one one drop of dish soap. I did make sure to get just a clear dish soap with nothing in it. I didn't want something with tons of stuff in it. So this is palm olive pure and clear. Hey Rhonda. Hey Tamari. Very different look. So you can see that the you'll get a different look on the jelly plate whether you put the soap on there or not. So right now we're going to just do some backgrounds, which is what I wanted to do first. So here's the orange one. I should hold it up. It's so cool. So do you have to have acrylic paint to do mono printing? The answer to that would be uh, no. Hey, Eve. So I can see that the more you use the jelly plate after you put the soap on um, the more it's sort of washing away the soap and it's starting to beat up more so you're going to want to put more soap on there we're not going to right the second Rhonda yeah right so it, it oh, so cool so um soap a jelly plate and watercolors who would have thunk it This might be a mistake, but this is because this is a dark red, but I'm going to just put a little bit. We'll see. No mistakes in art, right? Only happy accidents. So cool. I'm going to take a dark color from my other palette. Um, let's do the indigo which is dark blue, I'm gonna get that wet. And while it's getting all nice and juicy, let's get some neon yellow in here. Cause who doesn't love a good bright color, right? I forgot to turn my phone off. Everything is digging, dinging. Why does the doorbell ring, things ding? As soon as I'm busy with something. When I'm not busy, nothing happens. <laughs> so nothing is going to make the jelly plate react in a way um, that watercolor does on paper. It's always going to beat up to a certain extent, but if you break the surface tension with the soap, it beads up less. so cool all right so i want to um i need a different brush we're going to take some of that indigo color the dark blue which i just splattered everywhere because you know my middle name is not grace I should put some more soap on here because that's not going to work without the soap on there. So let's wipe this off. I need more soap. Another drop of soap. There we go.
Yeah, they're, they've got to be made of some sort of plastic or polymer, you know, something, uh, I'm sure. Shall we see how that turns out? Now you want a jelly plate. This is the small six by six one. You don't need a big one to do interesting prints. Why couldn't you, Rhonda, try blowing soap bubbles on the um, um, on the jelly plate to get prints? Why couldn't you? Okay, so who doesn't love that? That is so cool. I should just leave the soap open. Right? I, I, I thought right away, I thought, okay, let's see if we can do a face. Now, on the Jelly Arts video, they did some flowers, which were interesting. Which I'm gonna I'm gonna keep kind of loose like they did. I'm barely, barely, barely touching the brush to the jelly plate because whatever you put on here is gonna like spread out and get smushy. That's a word, right? Smushy. And these little six by six cards can be put into your journals. You could cut them up um, and use them as embellishments. Um, you could use them as pages in a journal. You could send them out as happy mail. So cool. You could embellish that. Once you have these like this and they're dry, then you can go over this and embellish it with, you know, your gel pens and your markers and stuff too to just keep going on it. Let's do another face. I think there's probably a lot of soap on there, so we're going to let's try it and see what happens. I'm right handed. I need to turn it a little bit. And you have no control. You know, I have very little control over what the paint does, where it goes. And you know what? You guys know me well enough to know I love that. I love it. I think that's fabulous. You get the most interesting art that way. Smushy's a word. Okay, good. So I, I suspected there was some mineral oil in it. Um, I do rub mineral oil on my jelly plate when I'm done with it. I'll clean it off really well with baby wipes and then rub it down with some mineral oil before I put it away. I don't worry too much about the jelly plate staining because they do stain, but that's all right. I'm not actually that concerned. Some of it will come off when you're cleaning it. 
Um, I don't know. Should we find out? Um, I have this palette handy. This is a Daniel Smith metallic palette. Let's put um, this purple. Maybe the blue. So I'm going to activate the um, duochrome mauve and the um, iridescent electric blue. Daniel Smith. So let's find out what would happen. Oh, I just wiped out the soap off. <laughs> I need some soap on there. So if you do like the backgrounds without the soap, it beads up and it, you get an interesting texture. But then when you want to go put a design on the jelly plate to print, um, if you put the soap, you'll, be, you'll get happier results. And you notice I'm using paints that are dry. They're not like fresh out of the tube or anything. Should we see what happens? This is Gerda's idea. If you guys don't like it, it's her fault. <laughs> oh, that didn't show up at all. <laughs> see? That didn't show up at all. That's interesting. Let's put that aside. Let's try that again with like the regular watercolors. Um, I have some dioxazine purple. That's a pretty dark color. I can't imagine that that wouldn't show up at all. Oops. Okay, let's see what happens to it now. We'll find out. The fate, I love how I, a classy broad, I agree with you. Hi, Patricia. Um, I love the organic lines you get in the face and it really gives you an interesting, um, an interesting look. See, there you go. So the metallics aren't like quite, they're not opaque enough to really show up in layers when you're doing layers. So that's the suede paper, which I love the way it watercolors, but it does jelly print really well too. This is um, an eight by eight pad that I evidently was doing swatches on. I think those are the da Daniel Smith metallics. I don't remember now. Okay, let's make some more backgrounds. I am loving this. I think this is fabulous. This is going to be a new way to get your jelly prints done. Now, the piece I did last week where I painted the face over a brightly colored neon background, this would be one of the ways to get the neon background.
it would, Amy. It would probably make a nice shimmery background. We could try one without anything else on it and just the metallics. See? I mean, this is just really interesting. And I could see some doodles and other artwork over the top of that. Let's activate the metallic palette and see what happens. <coughs> my asthma is just making me crazy, you guys. Yeah, the drop of soap. And that was not my tip. That was from Jelly Arts. So go over and if you're not subscribed to the Jelly Arts website, I do recommend it. And um, show them some love. Like, share, and subscribe. I'd appreciate it, of course, if you did that here, too. There is a little bit of the neon still on here. We're going to leave it. And both my waters are dirty now. Because I'm so excited about what we're doing. I forgot to, like, make sure I leave a clean water. Why would I do that? <laughs> okay. Oh, the metallics show up really well on dark paper. But see, when you do them here like this on just the white, look at that. There's a little bit of ghosting of the neons, but mostly that's the metallics. That's a nice start on the background. I need some more paper. This is what happens when you jelly print. But you use up all the paper, so it's, that's not a bad thing. I've got a lot of paper. <laughs> all right, let's do another one. This is the Duochrome Aqua. I don't have any black paper handy, or I would try it. At least I don't think I do. Oh, I might have a four by a little card. Hold on lying to you unintentionally. Let's put this on here. Hey, Muriel. No worries, Muriel. These recordings of these broadcasts always stay up on my channel. Today's will be interesting because <laughs> my doorbell rang half, you know, a few minutes in. Let's get some black. Okay, this is just black scrapbooking cardstock. This is nothing fancy, um, and it's very inexpensive stuff from Hobby Lobby. We'll see if we can do like a wipe up ghost print. Yep. Look at that. You seeing that? And again, these are good, like, just backgrounds for, you know, starting some um, doodles or, you know, other, you know, a journal page or, okay, let's do some more of that. <laughs> so I like that. So this, this iridescent palette of mine is all Daniel Smith and it has gold, iridescent gold, Aztec gold, bronze, copper ruby electric blue and blue silver and then it has duochrome violet fantasy ocean aqua uh cabo blue hibiscus mauve and violet just fyi oh that it's probably a youtube thing cindy <laughs> it's not by my choice <laughs> Okay, so now let's do some more printing. Let 
Yep. That is so cool. And this is just from a stack of the, you know, four by six pre-cut uh, pieces of, you know, scrapbooking cardstock. You know, you could take these um, ones on the black paper. They'd be a good start to, like, galaxy doodles, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know what YouTube is doing, and I just got an email today, Cindy. I don't know if any of the rest of you who have channels got it. But they're changing the look of YouTube coming up soon. I don't know what that's about. Kind of scares me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even able to reply to all the comments because, you know, some of them either are just not there or, um, you know, they're in spam, but I can't open them. I don't know. So I'm just layering some of these metallics on the black paper. It's turning out really cool. I mean, look at that. That's really cool. Whether you use it for an embellishment or you doodle on it or make a tag out of it. Why not? Why wouldn't it work on deli paper? Uh, let's give it a try. I've got a sheet right here. <laughs> Let's try the deli paper with something more pigmented like the neons. Oh, my water's dirty. I said that already. All right. Yeah, so especially if you have a watercolor palette that you don't, maybe you just don't even like watercolor, right? Um, maybe you have a palette of watercolors that you don't care for the consistency or quality of them. You definitely, uh, a little creative, could do this with them. How great would that be? Yes, it works on deli paper. Um, that would be great because I love when you collage with deli paper, the deli paper almost disappears and you're just left with the marks. And who doesn't love that? And I do the same thing, Kathy. If it's someone I sub to, then I just let the ads run. Yay, Eve. <laughs> Cindy, blank. That's not good. Mine sometimes says there's no connection even when there is a connection. So I don't know. It's YouTube of you guys. I'm telling you. It's not your like internet service or anything else. It's YouTube. YouTube's having issues. Well, five-minute ads are ridiculous. <laughs> Even on TV, they're not that long, and I hate the ads on TV. Excuse me. I did say my asthma is bad today, didn't I? I've taken all my medicine. It's still gross. How fun would that be to use on your um, channel? On your channel, on your art. Oh, Patricia, yeah, I have backups of everything on an external hard drive. You know, you wait till they go on sale, and then you get the biggest one you can afford, and then you back things up.
Let's print on this one. The muted, muted palette. Who's muted palette? Because I have one I've put together myself, a little creative. Um, are they, is it a particular company or? I have a muted palette I put together with Daniel Smith and uh, M. Graham paints, and I do really love it. I made boobs. Oh, I did make boobs. <laughs> Figures. Um, let's see. Yeah, external hard drive, pa Patricia. So I have everything on there. And really important things are stored on a flash drive that th that's then taken to the bank and put in my safety deposit box. Thank you for loving the spirals. So yeah, so what I would do is I would just make sure that if you're using gel medium, you don't get the top wet. Or put it through your Xyron and make it into a sticker. But you could definitely do it. You just The trick is to put your gel medium or Mod Podge on the page, then stick this down, and then use a dry, flat something to squish it into your glue without getting the glue on. And then this isn't going to go anywhere as long as you don't get the top wet. And that does look like boobs. Didn't even think about it. It's a Gonzai. Okay, yeah, I don't have that one, but I have a muted palette by Daniel Smith that I put together of Daniel Smith colors, and I do really love it. Of course, Amy. Shoot. And this has soap on it, so when I do this, it's getting a little soap on the, t on the surface of the paper. Let's see, I'm gonna grab some turquoise because of course I am. Why wouldn't I? At least I think that's turquoise. It's either turquoise or Indian blue. No, it's turquoise. <laughs> um, Yeah, send me a comment um, with the link because I would love to see it. Cindy, <laughs> I've always got something stuck to my fingers. So <laughs> everybody I know is usually they're used to it by now. My my, I'm frequently going out somewhere with blue fingers or paint on my clothes I don't know is there. <laughs> Happens all the time. Yeah, I don't know about the gum Arabic. Gum Arabic is a binder generally, but it might do something. Try it. So colored pencil storage, Amy, um, there is a really great um, line of pencil cases that you can get online or you can get a Hobby Lobby that hold, I think it's 2448 and like 120 um, pencils. And I know from experience, 120, you can fit like 140 in. Um, I would look into that. There are some big zipper cases for holding your color pencils. I even like that one better. See, look at that.
um people are are messaging me <laughs> cuz you know I'm live so it's time for them to all bug me <laughs> I love when you guys bug me it's all right let's see put that on this one Okay, Cindy, yeah, let us all know. Yeah, and there are roll-up cases. Kathy is right. You can also, Kipling makes a um, large 100-pen case um, that is actually really um, cool, and you can, I think, fit a little bit more than that in there. So I'm just going to take some water. This is watercolor, remember, so... I'm going to turn my paper a bit. I love these. These are great. I agree with you, Cindy. These are really, you know, interesting starts on something else. Um, of course, they could be, you know, prints on their own. I'm going to leave this one alone because I like that one. Let's add something to this one. And again, I'm not, I'm not putting any more paint on here. I'm just putting water on here now. You could actually spritz it. Where's our spritzer? Because there's watercolor on here. And you just do like cleanup prints like you do with acrylic paint. So, a Amy, I would go to Hobby Lobby, use a 40% off coupon, go to the pen and pencil aisle, and they do have some pen cases there, um, some nice ones. They have a few different kinds. So I would go look there. I might, I might need to leave that one because I kind of like where that one is going. Yeah. Get a little more soap on there. Yeah, check them out. Always try the places you know have a coupon first um, for at least 40% off, like Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Um, if you have one of those nearby or another store that you know that's near you that has that sort of thing, um, before you go spend full price on something. I have no plan other than I knew I wanted to play with this today. Just FYI, you know, it's normal for me. No plan. <laughs> so I hope this gives you guys some ideas of just something new and fun and interesting. <sighs> so um, that you can try with your watercolor paints. Yeah, I'm a big couponer. I used to be a bigger couponer than I am now. I love a good coupon. I love a good deal. <laughs> yeah, this is really a great technique and you could really have a lot of fun with it and make something really unique. I did want to show you um, really quick. I'm going to put this aside for a minute. So this is the um, printed paper. 
I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I'm going to be moving the camera around. So if it's making you all dizzy, I'm sorry. There we go. So these are the printed, this is the same kind of paper. This is just printed already with a design on it. So if you don't, you know, know how to draw, you just want something you can color in. Um, this is the paper for you. And it's the same as the other paper. And you can just color it in and it comes, these come in 12 by 12 sheets. These are just little like sample squares, but it comes in big 12 by 12 sheets. And there's all sorts of designs, you know, butterflies and there's all kinds of things. It's nice to have these little squares. You can cut up the 12 by 12 sheets just in like random squares. And then you have something like this that you can um, just play with a few of your watercolors, maybe try some different colors, try a new palette, um, and have these little tiny, they become small embellishments that you can then use in your uh, mixed media in other places. Oh, I'd appreciate that, that thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, thinking about think about subscribing. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you would like to support my channel by shopping in my Etsy shop, um, or joining one of my Facebook groups, um, or um, you can tip me. There's ways to tip me over on my website. Um, you want to email me, send me happy mail. There's all kinds of information in the description. This is the same paper, a little creative. This is the same paper, only this, instead of being a big blank sheet, this is printed uh, on both sides. So the links for both of these papers, whether it's blank or printed, are in the description. And this is the one that we got soaking wet at the beginning. It's almost completely dry now, and I just did a little bit of coloring on it. Hang on one second and I'll show you. Let's see. I've got to find them. Hold on. I don't know where I put them. They should be technically speaking in here because I don't have tons of 12 by 12 sheets of paper. Since I don't really scrapbook anymore. Mm, that's not it. Uh, might have put it somewhere else. Hang on. Yep, I did. So the it comes plain or it comes like this. Look at this. So these are just a few of the prints. And again, you can color these in with your watercolor. Or you can cut them in up into little squares. printed with stuff on them. So if you don't know how to draw but you want to play with your watercolors, this is the great this is the product for you because it's already got a drawing on it. It's done in this really great um, paper that takes watercolor amazingly. Um, so it's a little bit better than your standard adult coloring book which usually is printed on paper that you can't really watercolor on. Um, so go check out these papers. You want to get the papers that say, um, <laughs> painty, whatever it is I put in the video description because I don't remember now. <laughs> I don't know. These are some of the ones I got because I helped them out at CHA, so...
So yeah, I would I would go to the Canvas Corp website. I don't know what stores these are available in, um, but I know you can order from the Canvas Corp website along with the blank, which is the suede paper. And definitely you can use your jelly plate to watercolor. I mean, how cool are some of these? And this right here, you could this could be just the way it is. You could add a little bit of pen work or journaling to this. How cool would this be? In fact, let's do that really quick because we have a few minutes. Oh, I can't. <laughs> There's no room to put stuff. Okay. My desk was a mess before I got started today. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the pen that's easy for me to grab, which is the Pilot Varsity Disposable Fountain Pen. So this is what I would do with this piece. I would keep it loose and sketchy, suggestive, just the way the print is coming off the jelly plate. Make If you're using a pen like this Pilot Varsity, then you want to make sure it's dry because this Pilot Varsity is not waterproof. So I would do that. How cute is that? A little bit of jelly printing and a little bit of doodling. There is a Michael's coupon that's like a 50% off coupon. I just got it. Oh, that's, that sounds interesting, Muriel, with the rolling ink. You'll have to show us one of these days. Does anybody have any questions? It's called suede paper, yeah. The blank one is called suede paper, this one that we did that, was, that I cut it up. It's called suede paper. And this is the printed one, which is the second link. The links are both in the description. And it sh the suede paper one should take you right to the suede paper listing. The second one should take you to the listing where they have a bunch of the different designs for this printed one. This was a lot of fun. Quick, easy, a new way to use your jelly plate and your watercolors. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, Feel free to leave a comment on the video if you have a question, comment, or concern. Um, if you need my one of my the link for one of my Facebook groups or my Etsy shop or anything, um, my email address, my Happy Mail address, all that stuff's in the video description. You're welcome. Go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Sorry about the interruption. Uh, I'm going to go out and see what, if anything, is going on with my fence. <laughs> All right. I will talk to you later. The owl paper. The owl paper. Okay. So these printed ones, they are printed on the same as the paper I got started with, The uh, this blank one. It's just printed on both sides. So they're the same paper. One is just blank and one is printed. The links for both of them are in the video description. All right. All right, I will talk to you all later. If you have any more questions about the paper or the listings, uh, PM me or leave a comment on the video or catch me over on Facebook. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Bye, guys.